What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic here on the Odd Chopper channel coming to you with another edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. Hit that like button, subscribe button, and notification bell as we get going. It goes a long way for me on this video. It goes a long way for you because then you become a prize whenever great content is going live here at the Odd Chopper channel. Oh, my Boyan in the first half. Obviously, I'm coming to you guys live uh, on Tuesday night for Wednesday slate. And Boyan had 15 in the first half. That's lovely. You know what's not lovely? The Brooklyn Nets. My God, how do you lose that badly? They got blown out of the water uh, in Ben Simmons' return going back to Philadelphia. Now they'll be on a back-to-back -back along with a bunch of other teams. But we have 12 games. Yes, 12 games to break down. So I'm not going to kill any more time here at the top. I'm going to live look into Bojan if they start that second half while we're recording. But hit that like button, as I already said, and head to BetMGM, which is in the comment section below. Uh, you're going to bet $10, and here's what you're going to bet it on. Spain. You're going to bet $10 on Spain on the money line because if a team scores a goal in this game, you're going to win 200 bucks, and Spain's just going to win. I know it's going to return you, like, next to nothing, but guess what? You bet $10, 200 bucks, basically just being handed to you guys. Yes, handed to you over at BetMGM. Make sure you take advantage of that right now. All righty, I said 12 games, no time to dilly-dally. Let's get to the picks. We start off Wednesday's gigantic slate with Philly on the second leg of a back-to-back, -back, taking on Charlotte in Charlotte. And no idea what sort of Sixers team shows up in this spot, because one, James Harden, Tyrese Maxey, Joel Embiid, all are still out once again, so and they will be for some time. And two... They just got done with a pretty high-voltage game at home. They beat up on Ben Simmons and the Nets here. Pretty wild to watch. And now they go on the road, though, for this one. We had Matisse Thibel go down. He doesn't really matter. But you saw big minutes out of Melton. You saw big minutes out of Shake Milton. You saw big minutes. Tobias Harris got dinged up. We'll see what that injury report looks like. But clearly a difficult spot for a team on a back-to-back. -back. And if they're going to be limited, there you go. But if you had to face a team on a back-to-back -back in this spot, might as well be the Charlotte Hornets, am I right? I mean, they just got LaMelo Ball back, and now they had him play three games, and now he turns his ankle. So good times, Hornets fans. Now it's back to Terry Rozier and Kelly Oubre pulling the entire offensive load. But now Gordon Hayward's back. And this is pretty clearly a spot to back a team who hasn't played in a couple days versus a team traveling with no real relevant NBA players on it at the moment that they just went the distance on Tuesday night. So it's not a jam play for me at this number, but a standard like on minus three and a half. Give me Charlotte. Give me uh, land the points and give me money, please. Here's a wonky one. The Damian Lillard list. That was hard to say. T say that 10 times fast. The Lillard list trailblazers head to Cleveland to take on a Cavs team absent Karis Levert and possibly Kevin Love. Those are not things that really matter all that much because you still get the usual suspects, the Darius Garlands, the Donovan Mitchells. So it'll be squarely on the shoulders of Anthony Simons on the Blazers side to keep this one competitive, just like he did Monday night against the Bucks. Problem is they still lost that game. And they're probably going to lose this one, too. Eight-point dogs on the road seems perfectly appropriate to me, so we're not going to tangle with that. However, there is a prop that stands out to me here, and it's one Jarrett Allen's over on 13.5 points. It's slightly above normal juice at FanDuel. The Cleveland big man gets a soft interior matchup against Nurkic and Eubanks, some combination of them, and Portland's also been doing some lineup iterations going small, which would be quite dumb considering Allen and his counterpoint or his counterpart, excuse me, Evan Mobley in that front court. But if Kevin Love sits, might be even even smaller uptick to Allen's minutes. It's good enough for me to like the over of 13 and a half, but I'm going to call it a lean. I'm going to wait on the Kevin Love news, see if there's anything else, because I'm sure there's going to be props that show up based on tons of news coming out throughout the day. Not my favorite play on the board, but a lean over of 13 and a half, something I'm very much paying attention to for Wednesday's slate. My Minnesota Timberwolves, hey, nice little close game, close win there. Rudy Gobert scored zero points, didn't attempt a field goal attempt. Well, he scored points just at the free throw line. Kind of an interesting iteration that we saw from them last time out, but they're going to take on the Iowa State boy himself. Yes, my alma mater, Tyrese Halliburton of the Pacers. And what adjective adjectives are there to describe this man? Halliburton is just so, so, so insane. How about that one for an adjective? Averaging 20, 11, and 5 with 11 dishes? I mean, that's it's ridiculous on a per-game average. And he's doing that in less than 33 and a half minutes per game. Pretty mind-boggling stuff for a young player. 
And now he gets a pace up spot, which is hard to say too often considering the Pacers are already fifth in that category. Yes, even with Rudy Gobert sitting there at the five instead of Jared Vanderbilt in the starting unit this season, the Timberwolves fourth in pace. So expect fireworks in here uh, in this one, although the total of 235 already indicates that, so not going to be touching that in any way, shape, or form. What I will bet, however, is the living crap out of Cat's three-point props when they're set at one and a half. Really? One and a half? He's attempted at least six in three of his past four, hitting at least two in all four of those. Now, I will say it's he heavily pretty, uh, it's juiced pretty heavily in the minus 160-ish range, so there's that. But at one and a half, I'm all about that life. It's just too low. I think it could be a single game parlay piece. I think it could be a great piece for all of you. I'm all about it. So we like it. I like it very much. That's why it's got a like button. It's actually, uh, nope, I had to write the first. Well, no, it's this one. Crap. I tried. Off to Georgia for Sacramento and Atlanta. Kings on a back-to-back -back here. Hawks, not. And not much injury info here. We're just waiting on DeAndre Hunter's status. And that's pretty negligible in the grand scheme of this slate. My lord, the Kings. Let's just talk about the Kings. I'm live looking in right now. They're up three with 10 seconds left in this one. Could get across the line here. Uh, John Morant just made a bucket here with five seconds left. We'll see how this one finishes out. But either way, uh, I didn't actually end up betting the Sacramento side, even though that was on the video yesterday as the like button. Mainly because John Morant got upgraded out of the middle of nowhere to questionable. So that's kind of a thing that's happening a lot in the NBA these days. That's why you want to be paying attention to news. But let's talk about Atlanta uh, in this spot here. Similar to our last game, that being Indiana and Minnesota on the card. Two teams are playing at an insane pace here. However, we had a lower total, like 235, sitting there in the last game with, game, uh, with teams playing fourth and fifth in pace this season. And that's kind of nuts when you look at this being 6th and 7th in pace and closer to 240 here. Sure, not a huge difference. But that really, really should not be the case, according to my model, when the Hawks are the best defensive unit of the four, 14th in adjusted defensive rating this season. What does it mean? Oh, what does it all mean, Basil? Yes, 239 with the Kings on a back-to-back? -back? Huh? What? Why? I've currently got this, again, really, really low there. And if math serves me right, which I really hope it does, because it's sort of my job to help you guys out and make some money together, under of 239 should be a lock button in this spot. I want to make sure that I'm not crazy about this. Plus, you could get some kind of news that ends up being, you know, something like Demonis Sabonis or De'Aaron Fox or somebody sitting here on the back-to-back. -back. Not positive of it. We'll have to be paying attention to the news. But under of 239, way too high from the get-go, considering all other things being equal under maybe oh hello it's me again i'm not going anywhere you just simply need to go over here bet spain spain's a lock you bet ten dollars on them on the money line uh i can guarantee you not an argentina situation we dodged that bullet even though once again there were goals scored in that game you still won your 200 bucks so it's kind of a no-brainer it's not just kind of it is a no-brainer bet ten dollars on spain minus 650 right now currently at bet mgm Make sure you get yourself your $200 when a team scores a goal in that game, and I can guarantee you there will uh, be a goal scored. So fire it up. Nothing to see here. Thank you to BetMGM. Take advantage of that in the video description box below. The marquee matchup of the day. We've got Dallas. We've got Boston. And I got to say, big piece of news you got to be paying attention to. Jason Tatum. Questionable for Wednesday's game. So hard for me to give you guys analysis knowing that that's going to be the case. But... There is a line available here right now, and I think it's just too many points to be giving the Dallas Mavericks. Yes, the Dallas Mavericks in this spot back to full force here, other than Spencer Dinwiddie possibly uh, not playing in this one. For me, it, he's been good of late, but Luka Doncic is obviously uh, the stud of the night. And if you don't have Jason Tatum out there, that is truly not a spot where I want to be laying four and a half uh, on this Boston side. So... This is just a scoop it up, leaning that direction. I want to see if there's any kind of a lean where we can get some more information regarding Jason Tatum. Such a big piece, though. So hard to break down anything here. You're not going to have any props available until that news uh, on the Boston side becomes available. So we sit, we wait, we have our hands just under our butts. It's a weird thing to say on a stream, but, you know, whatever. We continue on, plus four and a half on the Dallas side, leaning that direction. 
Oh, you want to talk injuries? Here are some injuries for everybody. We've got the Washington Wizards heading to Miami. We're going to Miami. Mahimo, Ami, Ami. I'm not going to slap anybody. That's the Will Smith way. But Washington, Bradley Beal, questionable. Monty Morris, now uh, considered questionable. Got upgraded to that. Those are two big pieces to be waiting on, but especially this Miami side. Let's just let's just go down the line. Jimmy Butler, out. Bam out of bio, questionable. Tyler Hero, questionable. Max Struess, questionable. God, are those a lot of injuries. I don't even know what to tell you. Again, no props available here, but a line? They're going to give me a line here? This is another situation where you want to just be snagging the points on the Washington side if an opportunity becomes available. Now, I say this a lot in the premium Discord, so you can sign up for that at stochastic.com slash Lindy. Use promo code ELINSIDER to get yourself one week free, then just less than 10 bucks. It's $9.99 a week after that. But you want to be reacting to news, and you want to be very reactionary. There's lots of places, especially Stochastic NBA, where you can get all of the great news and late-breaking news as it becomes available. But if you see instantly that Bradley Beal gets ruled out, this is obviously not a play. If you see that Bam Adebayo or Tyler Hero get ruled out, this obviously becomes a play, very much so. And it's plus two on the Washington side. That's where I'm leaning here. I don't think I want to be tangoing with anything on the Miami side. Yes, they're the home team. Yes, traditionally they would be the better team, but not in this current iteration. You get Porzingis out there on a matchup where Bam, I, I do expect Bam to play, so I will say that. I think he'll have to do a lot for this Miami team, but uh, we'll be paying close attention to a lot of the injuries here, but no Jimmy Butler out there for Miami. If you lose the shooting of Max Struess, if you lose Tyler Hero's ability to score the basketball, you're going to see a lot of minutes for, what, Cody Martin coming from the Miami side? Those are not minutes you should be excited about. Nikola Jovic, yeah, you heard me right. You know who I'm talking about. Lots of interesting characters there from the Miami side, so be paying attention to the news, but I am leaning plus two on the Washington side. No matter what, probably not going to be looking at betting Miami. Oh my dear God. Do we really have to talk about this team? I don't want to talk about this team. But we have to. The Brooklyn Nets facing Toronto. One and a half point dogs. I don't know what to say. It was an absolute utter disappointment. I'm in shambles. Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, and Ben Simmons. And you saw Ben Simmons play some A-plus basketball tonight. Whatever. They're on the second leg of a back-to-back. -back. I expect somebody to sit there. Kyrie Irving hadn't played basketball for two weeks. Ben Simmons, he's had back problems since 1994. I don't know. I don't know when he was born. Probably later than that, as sick as that is to say. But regardless, I definitely am looking at this Brooklyn team as one that might be sitting somebody, which opens up an opportunity where we might be able to snag some points on the Toronto side. But that's not where I'm leaning in this one. What I really think stands out is the under of 222 i think that that's going to be the main spot that i want to be leaning going to dunks and threes i mean if you just look at pure pace from the toronto side 23rd in pace not excruciatingly slow brooklyn uh, a little bit more middle of the road but i think the main thing for me just stands out uh you have no pascal siakam here i do expect toronto to continue to slow down the pace regardless of anything scotty barnes questionable for this one I just think offense is going to be tough to come by for both teams in this one. Brooklyn, another team on the road on the second half of a back-to-back. -back. So uh, you tell me if you want to be leaning any direction. I think the under of 222, I have it as a slight under right now. I think we might get some news to break our way where you get some nets ruled out, uh, especially the offensively inclined Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. It would make all the sense in all the land to be hitting the under of 222, but I'm going to sit and wait. I doubt this moves down that direction here uh, until that news would break. So uh, maybe the public can push it up to 223, 224. I think we're just going to be patient with it. But under 222, that is where I'm leaning as of right now, Tuesday night. We go to the Bulls and the Bucks. Interesting little spot in this one. And I think the numbers look pretty efficient. We've got seven. Uh, you're getting seven points with the Chicago side. Looks about correct to me. 218 and a half total. Also, according to my model, everything that I'm doing here at Stochastic makes a lot of sense to me as well. But there's one prop that I've been betting quite a bit that I think has just been inefficient. Now, the juice is starting to garner, uh, starting to go north on it a little bit. But this is a number that I found when I was over in old Europe. And it is Zach Levine. I think we got to just kind of buy into what we're seeing from some of these minutes in competitive games here of late. 
37, 36, 34, 36, 34. Lots of minutes, lots of opportunity for Zach Levine to shoot the basketball. Now, DeMar DeRozan, Nikola Vucevic, of course, they're going to con- continue to to kind of press into that usage a little bit here. But Goran Dragic, I do not expect to be blown. Well, I guess he's upgraded to probable. Regardless, the main thing for me here is Zach Levine's ability to shoot the basketball going back to his time in Minnesota. And now this season, 37.5% from three. He's getting all of the shot volume, 20, 22, 22 attempts. Those are three of his last five games in the box score. You give me the over of two and a half threes here under minus 140. And I am absolutely jamming that to the moon. I've been playing this one a lot. I think you guys need to join me in that brigade. Plus, we have seen routinely Milwaukee for the last couple of years, a team that you can definitely attempt a lot of threes. Very good at stopping uh, players in the lane, but give up a lot of three-point attempts. Zach Levine, kind of the featured shooter for this basketball team from deep. So, Zach Levine, 37.5% for three. Grading out very, very nicely for me. Lock it up. Give me that over. Oh, cool. It's another team that pissed me off on Tuesday. We're talking the Denver Nuggets taking on the OKC Thunder. My God. How do we even recap the madness that Mike Malone just presented us with? Let me let me just take you back in time here to a time. It was a nice, lovely Tuesday. Everything's nice. We have our bets in. We're feeling great. Nikola Jokic gets upgraded to questionable. Jamal Murray gets upgraded to questionable. And all of a sudden, Bones Highland, who got downgraded to questionable, ends up being active and playing in this basketball game. This team went from the walking wounded, six-point favorites, to being 12-point favorites at lock. That is a wild, wild turn of events. But you know what? Bojan Bogdanovic, 17 points. Yeah, that's a live look in right now uh, as they are. Where is that at? It's 5'10 left in the third here. Can we just get three more from our boy? We need three more from Bojan and I will be eating good tonight. But let's talk this basketball game. That's what's important. Second half of a back-to-back. Who's playing for Denver? I have no idea who's going to be playing for Denver. You need to be paying attention to that news. I'm going to drop an update I think it the well, I know I'm going to just do it into the YouTube comment section. If you guys want to hit me up on, on Twitter at Eric Lindquist, happy to get back to you there. Of course, the premium discord, everybody has access to me every single day there, but so many questionable things with this Denver squad, Jamal Murray, and Nikola Jokic hadn't played forever. And now all of a sudden, you know, are they going to be playing on a back to back in this spot? Jokic is smashing 21, nine and seven with five, 10 left in the third. Lots of opportunity for, you know, for anybody if he's going to be sitting once again. But that's why you're seeing OKC is only a two-point dog here. Pretty wild to see. I don't know who's going to play, so we're, we're done discussing that. But from the OKC side, Pokashevsky already been ruled out for this one. They're going to be pretty thin in that front court. I Obviously, if you get DeAndre Jordan as a starter instead of Jokic, if he ends up sitting on this back-to-back, that's a huge upgrade for anybody who has to deal with that interior. But as it stands right now, not a whole lot of analysis that can go this direction. I will say, I expect somebody or multiple pieces to sit from the Denver side on Wednesday because, you know, Jokic and Murray had been out for a little bit. So we're going to lean the OKC money line. You're getting plus money going that direction. You could get news breaking your way. I'm going to prefer to wait and see what happens. Uh, Don't really think that I need to try to guess at this one until more information becomes available. But kind of the theme of the day, not a whole lot to do until you have a better, clear situation. If you can guess right, sweet, sounds great. Fire up OKC. If you think everybody's going to sit, I'm kind of leaning that direction. That's why the money line for the Thunder side makes the most sense here. We have the Pelicans taking on the Spurs in this one, and lots of things you need to be paying attention to on the Spurs side. Jakob Pertl, questionable for this one. Zach Collins, also probable to play now. Hasn't appeared since the 4th of November. Uh, That's been a hot second, almost three weeks of time. Josh Richardson, doubtful. So that's another shooter there from the outside. But Keldon Johnson kind of had that surprise scratch the other day. He did play uh, against the Lakers there on the 20th. So yeah. It's going to be three days rest here for Keldon Johnson. He's going to be starting in this one. And uh, again, he's going to have to do a lot from the for the Spurs side. But this is all about the Pelicans for me. You have Ingram. You have Williamson. You have CJ McCollum. You have Jonas Valanciunas. You have Larry Nance, Herbert Jones. Trey Murphy questionable. My boy, Trey Murphy. But we'll see what happens with that. Doesn't really matter. You get a healthy Pelicans team in this spot. And it is very difficult 
for me to say that this isn't a, the most broken line on the board. Yes, you heard me. Most broken line on the board, according to the spread of any other spot. In terms of adjusted net rating this season, you're going to see New Orleans just continuing to climb the rankings, but fourth right now, plus 6.6 .6 adjusted net rating, sixth in adjusted offensive rating, fifth in adjusted defensive rating. This is just a good basketball team sitting uh, at what? I mean, they're just smashing a lot of faces here this entire season, up to 10 and seven now on the season. Makes all the sense in all the land against the Spurs team that has no inclination to try to win basketball games, has no real the real talent to help them do that anyway. If this was in, in New Orleans, this would be a double-digit spread. I am convinced of it. So why don't we just smash minus six here as is? Yes, smashing it to the moon. The last lock of the day. We're going the Pelly side. Zion, yeah, has his way. Massive game. I'm definitely looking at his props. But letting you know, New Orleans gets it done for us. Last lock of the board. My friends, our king. Yes. We need to start the Boyan fan club. That's no... Uh, can we get t-shirts? Have we gotten t-shirts yet? I think we need t-shirts. Somebody come up with in the video description box below. Give me your best Boyan t-shirt name. Or if you're a designer, go ahead and hit me up on Twitter. I want to see all the lovely t-shirts. But the man is just an absolute print fest. And I get it. Eric, oh, this is ridiculous. There's not even any lines out yet. Yeah, Bojan could definitely sit on a back-to-back. -back. This is a terrible basketball team. Detroit was 3-15 and 15 entering tonight. They're up two right now with two minutes left in the third quarter here. We need, what, three more points from Bojan in the entire fourth. Glad to see that that's competitive here right now. So I'm going to be paying very close attention to that one as we finish out the show. But I just love our boy. It's impossible not to recommend it. And normally... I have a strict rule, especially in baseball, where I do not give locks or likes unless there is a line that's out for it. But I have broken this multiple times for Bojan Bogdanovich. So, hey, these are also rules that I made up. So I'm going to break them correctly here. Bojan Bogdanovich, if it is set at 18 and a half or 19 and a half, once again, it is a broken line. He has gone up, uh, gone over that three in a row coming into tonight. Uh, hopefully that makes it four in a row. He's gone 12 and three for me personally, hopefully 13 and three by the end of this. Uh, on this prop for the season, this number needs to be 20, especially absent Sadiq Bey, especially absent Cade Cunningham. He gets all the opportunity. He's shooting 51% from the field on the season. He's shooting well over 40% from three. My God, friends, it is Bojan Bogdanovic season. Once again, I don't know what to tell you. You know what I'm doing. I'm slamming the over again, and you should too. Welcome to the Bojan bus. Oh, baby, you guys tired? I'm tired. Let's do one more here. We got the Clippers. We got Golden State. And you want to talk injuries? Here are some injuries. Paul George out for the Clippers. Kawhi Leonard out for the Clippers. Luke Kennard out for the Clippers. You're looking at John Wall having to do some serious things for this basketball team to be competitive. Marcus Morris Sr., Reggie Jackson, who loves to shoot the old basketball. This should be a wider than a seven and a half spread. I'm pretty positive of it. I'm going to just call it a light going to the Golden State side. And here's kind of why. They've been terrible until recently. Do I need to say more? Do I need to add and expand upon that? I probably should, I suppose. This is still a Golden State team that at its nucleus has the same pieces surrounding it. Yeah, did they not have James Wiseman work out for them? He's now sent to the outer world, to the G League, and... Well, maybe we'll see him again. Maybe we won't. But the nucleus of Steph Curry, Jordan Poole, Clay Thompson, Draymond Green, Andrew Wiggins now getting back in the fold. That is going to be an important piece, uh, an important rotational piece for them having Andrew Wiggins healthy and playing. I don't know what to tell you. Seven and a half just seems like a like button. Now, I will say this is a meager like because this is a lot of points to be laying against a well-coached basketball team. Ty Luke, very functional in that direction. But I must say... I want to see if there's anything else that we get from a surprise from the Clipper side, but no Paul George, no Kawhi Leonard. Hard to really like this Clippers team in any way, shape, or form. And that does it for another edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. You know what to do. Head to that comment section below. Let me know your favorite plays for Wednesday slate. We've got a massive 12-gamer. There's going to be tons of news, tons of things changing. 
I'm going to throw some updates into the YouTube comment section. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, hit me up on Twitter if you have any questions. Head to the premium Discord. You can sign up at stochastic.com slash Lindy. Use promo code ELINSIDER to get one week completely free. Yes, completely risk-free. Check that out. Uh, you can sign up in the comment section below for that too. But check out BetMGM more than anything. Bet Spain, because they're going to absolutely smash on Wednesday, unlike Argentina. That was hilarious. But uh, take advantage of that. World Cup stuff going on constantly here. We've got great content on the Odd Chopper channel for you in that department as well. Obviously, there's going to be no basketball Thursday. Three great football games. I'm sure I'll have some content somewhere. Uh, breaking that down, I'll for sure have some bets in the premium Discord. But otherwise, we'll be back here Friday for another massive NBA slate. Until then. I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the NBA streets on Wednesday.